Okay, and welcome to Doris's Kitchen. Today we're going to show you how I made a castle birthday cake. Now this is for my granddaughter, who's uh, turning three. So we'll put her three candles. Make sure we get this one scented first. Here's her three candles. Now we try to use all kinds of colors to be as festive as we can and because she is going to be the princess of her castle, uh, her auntie got her a crown. So we're going to finish uh, by putting a little yellows, which is what we need for every one. We got a little girl. This one here will go here, but first we need to finish uh, our flowers here. So we're going to start with that. Now I've already made the white dots and everything, so all I need is my whoops, crossover on ya. Is our nice yellow dot in the center. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So this kind of goes with her crown. And I'm sure you can hear the little kitty cat there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So this it just adds more color to everything. Uh, and if you know that from before, I use uh, just the pans that I happen to have around. So in order to make this, all you need is a glass, cupcake pan, uh, one of your large casserole dish, which is the bottom of the cake, and two of your nine inch uh, dishes. Look at this, doesn't this add so much more color right to it? Grass just full of flowers. Because it is kind of springtime. You know, her birthday's April 13th. So today is make the cake. Tomorrow's make all the goodies. Uh, for her party, and then her party's on the 13th, just like her grandma, me, she calls me her Mimi, mine's on the 13th, but mine's in September, and my mother is also on the 13th, but hers is in July, so we have a bunch of 13s here which is really a lucky number. Unless you were the bus driver when I was a kid, then he didn't like me being on the bus on the 13th, especially when it ended up on the Friday. But, you know, if you know, when I uh, do my other videos and everything, I try to use just the pants that we have around the house, so I'll explain that a little bit more to you as we go along. making my center my dog look at that isn't that pretty I mean look at the colors that it adds to it to make it very festive for kids because that's what you know parties are especially for the little ones and everything the three-year-olds uh, she's had a hard start in life so every ounce is a milestone so a lot of nice sugar for her right here and she has her dollhouse that her uncle made her, so she'll be able to use these dolls uh, also in that dollhouse. So this is going to be her third birthday. She's quite a special little girl in her own ways. Now if you notice, we use pretzels coming down. And for our gate, uh, we use um, some Twizzlers. That's what we use to make kind of like a chain coming down to let the gate up and down, uh, as they do for castles and everything. And then we decided on the pretzels uh, for the logs and stuff. 
We did think about Kit Kat, so if you like Kit Kats better than you do um, pretzels and stuff, you can also use Kit Kats, but I thought proportion-wise Kit Kats might be a little bit on the big side. So I stuck with my pretzels. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful cake, huh? So we made the door, and we kind of made it so it looks like it opens up, making the wood go up, and then just the slat sideways. We also, because they're always looking over the water for enemies or whatever <laughs> and stuff, so we made our windows and everything. We made them on the side, and we made two more in the back and everything. So the sides also have their windows and everything. Uh, so if you want to... Uh, I make my own frosting. I don't buy what's in the store. Uh, so if you want to know how much of everything, because I'm one of these from the old days that just uh, mix it till it tastes right. I'm one of them. Uh, but I did measure it when I made the Barbie doll uh, birthday cake. So if you want to know how much is needed, you know, confectionery sugar and shortening and everything. I did measure that one out. So you'll need to do that much, follow that recipe, in the Barbie doll cake uh, for the pink. And then you'll make another batch and then you divide it out for the little bit of white that you're going to need right here, the little bit of yellow that you're going to need, and the green for the grass. And then throw the rest into the purple. So it's kind of like doing the recipe twice. All right, so this is how that goes. And this little girl, because she was in purple, I'll have to put her right in front. I have not picked flowers. There you go. Now how's that, huh? So you get to see all the ingredients. You know, I used my pretzels, my pink frosting, my pretzels, my purple. My white. These right up here, these are cupcakes. Okay, I got my two windows in the back. Got one on the side here. Look how beautiful that is, huh? Look at that. Special for every little girl. Look at that. She's right on the top. Her three candles to blow out. Made these extra little pieces here to make it look like a castle and stuff. And everything. Another one there, another window there. Uh, but these are just cupcakes. Okay, so you, I used uh, one casserole pan. And then on this one here, uh, for the back, I kind of made it so that it would take like half, half of uh, the glass. Okay, so, can, so that my pillar would sit all the way inside. But when I came to the front, I made it so that it was only one-fourth because I wanted my pillows to stick out a little bit more in the front than what they did in the back. So just cut that little bit out, make it even with the back here on this one, and then halfway through. But this one only one-fourth, and that's how I did that. Then I mixed all my frosting, and these are just cupcakes. I had a little bit of confetti and stuff, so I just put that all right on top and stuff. So this is our beautiful little cake. This is for Kara. See all the beautiful little flowers? Look at that. I mean, that's a little girl's dream. All the flowers and everything to pick up, all the extra little confetti on top there, her three candles, some dolls to use in a dollhouse. She's got some dresses here from one of her aunties with balloons and everything because we also have to decorate the house. But you can see how I did the pretzels and the um, using the frosting and stuff just holds the pretzels right in. See the liquish? That's my chain for my gate and stuff. So this is our Barbie doll birthday cake. This is very special for Kara. This is her third birthday. And she's very much loved. 
and she has a lot of family member who comes to her party so there's always got to be plenty of cake. Every time I think I make a big enough cake, it's never big enough. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed my showing you this. My beautiful little finished touch here to my beautiful castle. So there's her castle cake for her birthday. Happy birthday, Kara. Mimi loves you. Okay, welcome to Doris's Kitchen. And today I'm going to show you how I made my Smurf birthday cake. I have a little boy who's 12 years old and of course you know with the Smurf 2 about to come out July 31st in the movies, uh, this little boy, because his birthday's coming up, wanted a Smurf cake. So this is my idea of what a Smurf cake should be using a lot of the ingredients that I have in my home, which is, of course, if you follow my videos, you're going to know I like to use what I happen to have. So first I started with my 13 by, uh, I think it's 8, uh, casserole dish. And then I use an 8 by 8 dish but I have for the top, but I had to cut like 2 inches off uh, because I needed the, a little bit of more platform space. Okay, so what I have here, what I'm showing already, if you watch my accessory uh, video and stuff, you will see that I made, I used a small little uh, marshmallow, and then I just used my uh, green dressing and went around, and I did it in the light green and the dark green to make my trees. Then for my uh, little pumpkins that's in my garden, that's the marshmallow in the dirt, and you have the garden and everything. I used a small marshmallow, made some orange uh, frosting, and then dipped a little green for the stem and stuff. And then this here is a green taffy. Okay, I just used, I mean a green, a blue taffy, and I just stretched it out, stretched it out. I put two of them together, one, two. And they kind of just glue together and stuff, you know, once they warm up to the air and stuff like that. They're easy to work with. So that made my water, and then I decorated it with Tootsie Rolls, because kids love Tootsie Rolls. And you always have taffy when you got kids around. You always have Tootsie Rolls when you have kids around. So I took each Tootsie Roll, and I cut it into four, except for these here, right here. They're whole Tootsie Rolls. And then this one here, I had to add another half and stuff. But you can take Tootsie Rolls, cut them into four, so it makes like the rocks around the, the water flow. Okay? And then for here, if you notice, I use some of my honey smacks. So I'm using cereal. Okay. And then I made my little mushrooms here with marshmallow. And I made some frosting. And I added cocoa to my frosting. Made my little doors and windows. For the big one, I made bigger windows so I could put the bars up and, and uh, across. But the little ones, you know, you can't do that or it'll be all chocolate. Then I made my little doors and everything. So that's how I made them. And with the fruit roll-ups, if you watch my accessory, you'll know how I put my little tops together using a Hershey Kiss and the fruit roll-ups. Now for the little one, I use my strawberry fruit roll-ups. And for the big ones, I use the quiz because then it adds... Uh, some darkness just so it's not all red red and then I use some frosting and then I use my Cheerios, the multi-grain Cheerios. I used the wheat ones to put in there and then I made uh, my chimney with chocolate frosting. Okay, so uh, now we're going to get to um, right here for my flowers and stuff. I use some of my jimmies. Uh, that are like stars, so they became the center of the flower after I squirt a little dot of these here, green frosting. And for uh, my little garden, I just put marshmallows all the way around, and I use my chocolate jimmies. And uh, the pumpkins were made with the marshmallow because the little pumpkins for Halloween, you know, candy ones are not in season right now. So I used a marshmallow, made some orange frosting, 
wrapped it in there, let it dry overnight, then put my stems on. So that's how I did that. So now let's put the rest of this together so you can see how everything goes. I forget my most important characters, you know. Ah, you can't do that. Okay, so here, you know, uh, with um, Smurf 2 coming out July 20, uh, July 31st, uh, this little boy wanted a Smurf cake and everything. So here is Gagamel. And he's at the bottom. You know, he always has his little friend, Azrael, with him. So, I'm going to put him in here somewhere. Uh, maybe here. Hold him up. Uh, I'll stick right in there, buddy. Okay, let's start by putting our marshmallows. Okay, first we want our big ones up here. our other one. I forgot about the tilting, huh? How about that? Hmm. Probably have to pick them up and throw some more frosting underneath there. I think I'll have to do that. Okay. And then I'm going to put a couple of small marshmallows. Uh, Right here by the garden. There we go. And let me see. We'll put a couple more. One right here by this guy. And we'll put another one right here. There we go. And let's see, we'll put a couple more. One right here and one right there. See how you can just dress it all up? Okay, now we have to put our little Smurf friends, okay? So let's put that one there. There you go, you can soak them right in there. Okay, and the little girl. Guys, just playing and having fun. Ooh, should have been in the water. And let's add him. We'll put you knee deep. You'll stay there. All right. Now we'll just add these guys here. And this one, we'll put him right here. A little bit more room there. All right. So there you go. This is going to be, I'll turn around and put a little frosting underneath there just to make that more level and stop. But there you go. That is my uh, Smurf birthday cake for this special little boy. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed my bringing this to you. I hope you find it really nice. I mean, it's full of nutrition. It's got the Tootsie Rolls. It's got cereal. It's got taffy. It's got fruit roll-ups, you know, it's got a lot. And to uh, do the cake, you know, because it's a festive, it's a birthday and everything, I did use the Funfetti cake. All right. Bye-bye now. All right, folks, welcome to Doris's Kitchen. Now today we have something very interesting to show you, talk about, or whatever. And uh, this is actually going to be a feather bed. There's a very interesting story. So 
before I start the story, I'll demonstrate what I've done and everything, and then I'll share this kind of crazy story with you. Okay, it's all about dreams, you know, and how they happen. And this cake is because of a dream, okay? So what I'm doing is I've tried to make some feathers. Uh, I don't have the big feather kind of look on my uh, frosting and everything like the big professionals do, but the whole point of my channel is to bring you to use what you have around the house and do the best you can, and that's all that's asked of you, okay? So what I've done here is I made a two-layer white cake. This is actually a birthday cake. It has a funny story. Just stay tuned for that one, okay? So what I did was I used some of the uh, big campfire marshmallows and I cut them in half to make my pillow. So we have our pillow and now I'm doing the feathers uh, for my cake and everything. And uh, I made some beforehand of the different colors and probably be best for you not to use uh, tin foil. Uh, because it seemed to have kept the moisture there so that my leaves didn't dry as well as they should have. Kind of made the leaves a few days ago, you know, so that I could just layer it piece by piece. And it didn't quite really dry on the neve, and I'm sure that's because of the tin foil. Because, you know, that's supposed to keep everything fresh and everything when you put it in the freezer. So it apparently does the same when you're trying to use it this way, too. So, but I use what I have around the house. So if you have wax paper, use the wax paper. Okay, and then what I did is on this one, this is the rivage edge, which is what I use to make that. Okay, and let me demonstrate it to you. Uh, I'll take the camera right over there and I'll try to give you a close view of how that was done. Okay, so what I did was I left my my little rivage ed, right, edge right there. And then you start out with just one. And then what I did was go from side to side. And just keep going like this. See, and it kind of gives a little bit of a design there. And just go from side to side to side. Make it the length you want. Now what's really good, you know, and they really do look pretty. You know, they have a different look to them. You can see they have a little bit of that rivage, you know, like if you look at it real close, you can see that and everything. I think it might show up a little bit better for you on the green. So let me take you to the green. And you can kind of see that on the green a lot better. Okay. So we've made extras, and the reason for that is because sometimes when you pick it up, it might break. Uh, so just always make extras. Uh, when I do my uh, cupcakes and everything, because this is a party, you know, with quite a few guests coming, they're going to need to have plenty. So I have another video that I'll be doing on some of the uh, appetizers and stuff that uh, you can make that's kind of easy, different, and unique. So, anyhow, uh, I'm also going to use this to continue my edge. If you notice, I did my edge. And this is really kind of easy to do. Uh, so, I'll start doing the edge and I'll start telling you the story. Okay? Sometimes when you're using white and you don't wear your glasses, you don't know which ends, which side, because the other side is kind of flat. Uh, but... The story's cute. You know how sometimes you have a dream and it's just crazy and you remember it and you go, oh my God, what happened during the day to make this dream come, you know, happen for you? So, this is the chain of event. Uh, my daughter and... and friends and stuff. They all went on a camping trip. And, uh, of course, you know, when you can't fire some hot dogs, sometimes the ends kind of bust out on their own. So they had a few little funny, mm, naughty looking pictures. 
So uh, they sent a few of them to me. And it's like, oh my God. You know, because I am 59. That's something I uh, expect people to send to me. So that happened. And then my daughter came over to show me floor plans of the house that uh, they want to build. So I go, okay. So she's showing me, and she's showing me where the bedrooms are, and we're uh, deciding that uh, maybe, you know, a few of the bedrooms ought to be changed around a little bit. So I did this ruffle around the bed just because beds are like that. And now I have me uh, a nice man. Now this is all part of a dream, okay? So I'm going to continue to decorate, but I want to give you the dream too and why I dream it to begin with. But anyhow, um, her, my daughter's um, man is having a birthday, so because of the dream and the chain of events that took place and everything and the comment he made, I decided he deserved a feather bed with a man on it, you know, so here we go. So anyhow, uh, he does exercise an awful lot. He's very uh, particular about going and lifting weights and everything, so we have this man and uh, so we're going to put him in here and uh, have him laying down. Oh, wow, look at that. Even his wrist moves and everything. Cool. So let's lay him down in here. Okay, and what's good about this is the feathers will still bend as you need them to because it, like, didn't dry enough. Uh, so we're going to do that, and then we're going to pretty much cover him a little bit. Now I want him more on his side, looking up. And he's supposed to like welcome the woman in in bed. Uh, so we'll work with different color uh, to put on. Always have a towel ready because when you pick it up you might have some frosting on there and you're going to want to wipe that up. So anyhow, after she showed me the four plans and uh, we kind of uh, changed some of the rooms a little bit. Ooh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. So we changed a few of the rooms around. And uh, then, of course, you know, so I had these pictures that got sent to me in my email of their camping trip. Then she showed me, she come over and showed me the floor plans. Ah. See how sometimes they do break. But I think I'm gonna need to take them out. Get me another one. That's a good thing about making extras. You've got plenty to work with. There we go. Alright. So she showed me the floor plans and we done that talked about it all and, you know, where the rooms should go and, you know, how to arrange your house. Ah, no matter what, I think it's because of his leg, the way his leg is. That's okay, because we're going to have some more on top of that after. Work and change it and do it whichever way you can, just to continue to give the look, but I want him to have, um, I think I need that to stick out a little bit more here. Yeah. Um, there we go. So after we did that, uh, you know, because it was nighttime and everything by then, we decided, well, let's watch a movie. And so I let them put whatever they wanted. It's a little bit of a romance kind of movie. Like, okay, good. Yeah, he's looking good. All right, gotta cover him up like he's playing in the feathers. Uh, let me see. And what's good is, you know, sometimes when you're doing these feathers and you need a skinny one, if you made plenty, you can pick and choose which one you're gonna put on. So, but you see how you get a little frosting, so you're gonna wanna wipe that up. 
Ooh, quite sure how to put this one. A little bit of risk. There you go. All right. I need a little more this way. So we watched a really nice romantic movie and everything's cool. And so I went to sleep. <laughs> and you know, sometimes when you get old, you kind of like the, you know, the, the dreaming part because, you know, dreaming is kind of like going to the movies and not have to pay a ticket. Ah, look at that. So it's really kind of cool. I like it. I'm going to have to put one going the other way after. But, you know, it's really kind of, kind of neat to go to bed and you get to dream everything all out. And it's, it's a nice dream. <laughs> so anyhow, I dreamed that my daughter had finished her house. And uh, she wanted to show me her house. So I went over to see her house. And uh, for some reason in the dream, she starts out by showing me. Now, you know when you go visit a house, someone's just built it or whatever. The first rooms they usually show you is you know the living room or the kitchen you know one of those rooms but this dream didn't have none of them <laughs> don't know why i just didn't see it <laughs> or i woke up too soon because i had had enough of what i seen i don't know but um uh, anyhow the only room she wanted to show me were the bedrooms and it's open up one of the rooms and the walls are all painted blue the ceiling's blue and the only furniture in the room is a bed, blue bed, with blue feathers. And her man laying in the bed, you know, kind of propped up like this guy is, you know. And it's like, oh my God. So I hurry up and I shut that door. Now this is a dream, remember this now. So I shut the door, go into the next one. It's all dream, same thing. Okay, I think I'm going to go from this one here. The walls are all green and the ceiling's green and the only thing in the room is a feather bed. All green. I don't think this one's going to hold very good. Okay. That worked out okay. Now let's give them a blue. Yeah, I think I'll have to put a yellow on both sides on top there. So I hurry up and shut that door, you know. So you go to the next one and you find it all yellow, you know, the same routine. So it's like, oh my God. So anyhow, that was enough of that. So I just shut the door and I woke up from the dream. So of course I'm telling everybody, you know, about the story of, you know, this chain of events and then to have such a weird dream. I had enough of that. That was it. I woke up. But I had to let him know that, wow, this is really weird. And of course, you know, that would boost any man's ego. That's normal and stuff. And uh, he was just so happy. Okay, move your little hand there. So I can get another one in there. Yeah. Well, that kind of, you know, this almost looks like you could use it for Thanksgiving. You know, with all the colors, you know, maybe instead of the purple, you might want to go brown. You know, other than that, you could pretty well use it for that. All right, I need to add some more colors down at the bottom. Hmm. Just to give them a little bit more. These here, after a while, you know, like overnight, they're going to lay down. If I do it right now, unnatural, uh, it's going to just stick out like this and probably just break. But if you let it do it naturally on its own, these feathers, as you see, look, see how some of them just went and laid down on their own? They'll lay down. So I'll be all set. So he's... Hello and welcome to Doris's Kitchen. Now today I'm doing Kara's second birthday. If you follow the first cake, uh, the doll cake and everything, you'll know how to mix the frosting because I had the whole frosting on it on that cake and stuff. 
Okay, so it will be following the same amount of frosting because on the other one, you know, with the bunt cake, we had to fill it in to put the doll. And then we had to make our whole skirting and everything, so it required a lot of frosting. So just follow that recipe for that. But to make him, now, she loves that show, Yo Gabba Gabba. <laughs> I'm always going Gabba Gabba, but it's Yo Gabba Gabba. And her favorite character on that show is Muno, because there's Fufa, Flex, Tootie, Broby, but her favorite one is this one because I think maybe simply because there's only one eye and that seems to grab her. It might be the red. I don't know. She's a two-year-old. This is her second birthday. So today we're going to show you how to make that one uh, because this can be made for a girl because that happens to be her favorite character on the uh, Yo Gaba Gaba show. Uh, but this is what she wanted. This is her favorite character. And this can work for a boy and everything too. You know, where I done the doll cake last time. So this can work for both. And you know, it also can work for the young teenagers who like that uh, future Rama show. Because Leela also has only one eye. And she's, you know, one of the big characters on that show. Uh, because it's a science fiction kind of sitcom uh, kind of show. So you would just make it like this and then just put hair and, you know, dress her up. You know, different color frostings to, to make her look more human. But she's also one of those one-eyed. So, you know, I'm all into using whatever you happen to have around the house. So what I did was I just used my pan and I used a construction paper and traced it the size of my pan on it, fold it in half, then I made that, and then I opened it up, put it on cardboard because I have a double layer chocolate. Now he's chocolate all the way up to his eyeball. And then what I did, because he needed to be, you can see, he needed to be a little bit, um, and it cuts out really good when you have a cardboard, just put it on and do each layer, cut it out one at a time. Uh, but he needed to be a little bit taller, otherwise it'd be like going to the fair and standing in front of one of those mirrors, you know, that uh, make you look short and fat. So he needed a little bit more height. So what I did was, uh, and I also have people who like chocolate cake and people who like white cake. So I gave him chocolate up to his eyeball, and then what I did was I made some little arms. See my little arms? Okay, so... I made the next batch because you'll need two trays of chocolate for the double layer chocolate and then cut them out. Then you'll need just one layer of white cake mix and stuff. So you get your arms out of that and then what I did was I took one of the M&M uh, containers that I have, put the circle right there, cut right around it and then cut it right in half and added that to the top. So his arms and the top of his head is white cake. Isn't that nice? You don't see it when you're frosting it all up. Okay, now, many of you won't have a cookie sheet. That's the right size in order to put your character because this is a big party and stuff. So what I did at Christmas time, you always get those packages that have like the foam and stuff in it. Uh, so I saved the foam and then I got in Walmart the 99, 96 cents uh, vinyl covering, table covering. And the reason I like the vinyl is because, you know, when you're frosting, you always got uh, frosting that comes on there. And then you can just wipe it right off and it comes out easy. Okay, so that's how you basically get them all set up. Okay, and when, you, when I've done the dot for the eye, what you do is you just wait for it to dry a little bit. And then just push it down so you have a perfect circle. And that's what you're going to want to do because he's got to have all kinds of buttons all over him. If you watch the show. Yo, gaba, gaba. <laughs> I love that. I just love saying it. She really likes it a lot because it's a live action program for young children because there's a lot of listening and dancing and music and she's really into that. Okay, so what we need to add now is to add the two teeth because it's got two teeth on the side coming right out. They kind of overhang a little bit. So you kind of just make a V. 
and then you fill it in. There you go. And you come on the other side, you do the same thing. You know, you don't have to be 100% perfect, but, you know, you do the best you can. <laughs> but she really likes the show only because there's a lot of dancing and stuff going on. That's kind of cool. But it's nice for them to, to dance and get active and moving. And if you can keep them that way, then you'll be ahead of the game. Okay, I'm going to clean this out here because I need to use them now to make my dots all over the place. Isn't he cute? little girl and stuff. She's learning to do a lot of talking and all that good stuff. So, let me make sure I get some of that wiped right out. Okay, now so all there's left to do now, because I've done his eye, his own one eye, is to give him a bunch of dots. So what you do, kind of do just like you did with the eye and everything. Oops. Hooked on him. Is wait for it to dry. Give it at least 15 to 20 minutes. And then just go and dab them and they'll be just like a bunch of dots. Okay? And you just place them all over the place. No real padding to any of it. But he does have an awful lot of them. Just a nice little character. And I'll have the uh, finishing picture when he's all done and everything on uh, Pinterest. And then I'll send him because, you know, if some little kid wants it on a design for a t-shirt and stuff, that makes a nice gift for lovers of the show and stuff, then they can have it. So cool. Now, if you don't have one of these, you know, because they come in different forms and everything, well, you can have um, the bad one or whatever, and if you don't have the money to get into that expense, because, you know, this is all easy to make, you know, and stuff, uh, you can always just use a sandwich baggie, put your frosting in, and just cut that little corner, and then use it that way. Okay, so this kind of gives you the general idea of what he looks like and how he is. Alrighty, hope you've enjoyed my bringing this video to you. Bye bye now. Okay, today we're going to show you how to make a Barbie doll birthday cake. My little granddaughter, Kara, is turning one years old. And when her mom was one, I made her one of these cakes. Now, you get your Barbie and be sure to take her clothes off because she's going inside of frosting. Okay? Uh, and be sure to wash her too because you never know from the factory any oils or whatever may be on it and everything. So always wash your Barbie before you go sticking it in the cake that people are going to be eating. So first we took our bunt pan and we made ourselves a bunt cake and she wanted chocolate. So she has chocolate. 
and then you just put it down on there and we mixed our frosting of course I make mine homemade I don't buy the store stuff and what I did was I used three and a half cups of shortening one cup of milk to 10 cups of confectionery sugar. So that's going to take you almost two bags of the confectionery sugar there. Okay, so get your cake mix, follow the directions, put it in your bite cake. It'll have to take a little bit longer cooking, you know, because usually when you do a two layer cake, it's like 35 minutes. Well, you might need about 50 in a bite cake, you know. So you put that in there and you do that. And it took about a box and a half for the bunt cake, okay? So one box is not gonna do you, you're gonna need two. Okay, and the other half, what I'm gonna be doing is making cupcakes because she has an awful lot of people coming. So the leftovers can be cupcake and I'll be using the leftover frosting uh, on the cakes. Those that I do white, I'll write her name, Kara, and happy birthday on the others. Uh, so I have enough batter left to do at least a dozen cupcakes. Okay, because it takes you know, like one whole box, and then it's like you just need a little bit more. Otherwise, it'd be really lower. Now, the real Barbie dolls, this is what she wanted, uh, are longer in the legs and everything than the dolls that you could get at the store. So I had to make like another layer uh, with just frosting. Okay, so you have to play with whatever doll you have. But her mom wanted this Barbie doll. So you see, you know, when she hits the bottom, it only kind of goes up to her knees, so the rest has to be kind of built up uh, for her dress um, with frosting. So, this is how we're going to do that. Now, I know the first thing this little girl's going to do, she is just going to want to hug the cake because it's a doll. And she's learned love, love real good. She's a very lovable baby. I'm going to hurry up and cover this doll up here. Okay, so you want it to kind of just go like it's going to flare right out. Definitely takes a lot of frosting to do this, but you know, I make it myself, so. And you gotta be really gentle when you use the uh, uh, red food coloring, like I did, uh, because it really doesn't take much to get pink. You definitely don't want it to be, uh, I'm gonna use a big spoon on this one. She really needs her behind filled in pretty good here. Just enough for saving time. Okay, now I'm doing this only to go up here uh, because of how I'm going to decorate it after. And I did save some of the white frosting. Uh, for the bottom because on the bottom here I'll have the little white uh, flower design on there. Now I had somebody ask me for uh, how did I do my cake with uh, on my party when I done the baby shower and everything because they were thinking of doing it for um, Mother's Day, you know, her and her daughter were going to make a cake for Mother's Day. Um, so what I do is, you know, once you do this and you spread it with a knife, of course I use my own frosting. So if you follow this recipe, three and a half cups of shortening, one cup of milk to ten cups of confectionery sugar, this is how the right thickness you have. Okay, and that was a, quite a big cake uh, because it was for a shower, of course. And then after you spread it and everything, you let it just kind of like dry to the air for a little while. And then what you do is you just go through with your fingers like this to take out all the lines of your knife. You know, and it all just goes away. Right now it hasn't had the dry time, but if it did, you would see them 
you know, because your hand, of course, will get the Crisco that's in the shortening, and then it just smoothens right out. There you go. Doesn't she look pretty already? And she doesn't even have the fancy stuff on yet. Kara's such a special little girl. She came into life. She had a lot of little problems. Uh, she come a little early. But she's doing really good. She's one years old. She just passed 13 pounds. She's a little one, but boy, I tell you what, she's really smart. I'll start this and then I'll tell you a nice, cute little story what she did yesterday. Okay, so here she goes. And what I like about these Barbies is, see, you can move the hands. So afterwards, you know, if you want her to give the baby a hug, you just turn them around. Okay, this. And you make them, or you put them down, whichever way you want. So that's the good thing about Barbie dolls. Uh, so right now I'm going to put them down. I, her hair was down. This, she has a cute little bathing suit outfit. And her hair and everything was down. Uh, but because of the frosting and everything, I kind of want it up, and I don't want hair in the food. And I'll let Mom decide whether to take the band off or not and let her hair back down when I'm done decorating and everything. So, today's her first birthday, Friday the 13th. <laughs> she wasn't born on a Friday the 13th, but that's the way it is for now. Okay. And we're just going to put little ones here. I hear the boys are back. See, and you just take it. So what I done with my frosting is just take the one that kind of makes the flower. I put enough that it covers all the skin through. That's going to be the good part of I hurry up and cover this up before the boys come in. Almost looks like she put on a lay. You know, one of those Hawaiian lays. It's a little hard when you get on top here. There we go. And you just keep doing this. Now you can, I have also one of white because the bottom I'll put all white. Uh, but you can also do like a center or you'll want to put maybe like some buttons or whatever in the middle and front. And you just keep doing this through the whole uh, dress. Try to get the front done here. I don't know how long the battery on the camera is going to go. So this kind of gives you a nice idea how this is going to go. So, to get to my cute little story. Now, Mom always mixes her food because of her digestive system and everything on Kara. Mom has to mix her food and add, um, oh, one of the oils. I think it's olive oil. Okay, I'd like to welcome you to Doris's Kitchen. And today we're making a butterfly cake. Okay, so what I did was first I baked my cake and then to do my butterfly, I used a piece of construction paper and I cut my butterfly out. For the, there's all kinds of butterflies on the web so you can choose whichever one you want and stuff. So this is the one I chose. And then I just put it right on my cake after you let your cake cool down. Because if you don't let your cake cool down enough, Part of the cake's going to stick to the backing, as you can see a little bit of mine did. Okay, and then let it cool down. Cut it. 
And I use this, it's a cheapy knife, you can buy it at the dollar store or, you know, the dollar Wal Walmart special and stuff. And the reason for this is because it's very, very thin and this cuts real easy. Because if you notice a lot of people when they cut cakes and everything, they'll end up with flakes. So when they go to frosting, the flakes mix in with the frosting and then it's just a mess. But really it's because of the knife you're using. If you use really, really thin and stuff, it goes like that. And then allow it to cool some more after you've cut it. Okay, so anything that's exposed, you know, that wasn't part of the bake. You know, because I did cook it in my lasagna pan and stuff. And then I cut it out. Uh, it allows that to dry a little bit and to be in place. And stuff, and of course you gotta wait for your cake to cool anyhow before you're frosting, so you don't end up with a mess. So uh, then what I did was I made my batch of frosting, and then I used the black. Now to use the black, I went with these containers here to mix for black because if you use just the drop ones and everything, it's gonna take too much. Okay, and it's quite a combination and stuff. And then to do my purple frosting. All you have to do is use equal parts of red and equal parts of blue. So to do my first layer of purple, I use seven drops of the red and seven drops of the blue. Then when I wanted to do my trim around, what I did was I added another five drops of the red and another five drops of the blue. And if you can see, you know, there's for the uh, beginning of my butterfly and then I got a little bit deeper and you can play with it you know if you know to get it the right color that you want okay so this is adding another five of red and blue so that's what I got uh, so you can do your butterfly just like this and everything with just frosting if that's what you want but if you notice I have extra little colors of um, uh, sugar crystals and stuff because I'm going to add a little bit more colors into it uh, for my friend. This is a cake I'm baking for my friend and stuff. Uh, she's been a friend for a long time and you know when people have been your friend that long and you've reached the age that we have, you know when you're you know 60 is knocking at your door, it's time to let your friends know you know, especially when health issues come up, how much they really meant to you in your life, you know, because your friends that you've had, you know, for some 20-something years and stuff like that, they meant something to you. They were there through some of your hard times and stuff. So it's always nice to let them know that you cared. So this is why I'm doing this one. Uh, you know, health issues have come up for both of us. And you know, before one starts to forget the other and you know, we start forgetting people, sometimes it's nice just to be kind. And this one ain't quite good enough. If you find one ain't good enough, go back and put some more on top of them. It's okay. So I'm giving her a birthday surprise party. She doesn't know it. She pretty much stays cooped inside. And for those of you who can think that I'm uh, fixing a cake and I got a bit of a cold, it's not really a cold. It's all part of cancer treatment and uh, kind of took my voice a little bit here. Almost done. Hope I... Uh, Everything comes out good at the end. But, you know, that's what makes it important, you know, to, to remember to do something special for people who have been in your life, who have been nice and kind to you, you know, through the thick and thins. So, this is what I'm doing. You know, and I, even though she may forget, the rest of the family won't. All right, so there's our butterfly. Now we're gonna play a little bit with colors. I've never done the butterfly one before. 
So, uh, I don't want to overtake my purple because purple seems to be the color that she really likes. You want to add some color though. I'm sure she's going to be very surprised. Her husband knows I'm doing this, and her kids know. Well, not all the kids, but most of them. And we're going to do a whole cookout and everything to go with it. But you know, always make sure before life throws you a curve that you let the ones you know that were in your life that you love you know that you cared about them. Act of kindness can go a long ways. Okay, now I'm going to tap some of this in. I have purple and blue, but I think once the other colors are in, they look prettier. You know, just to make it festive. I mean, purple is her favorite color, so I did start with the purple. But, you know, and then, of course, it was between doing an angel and doing a butterfly because she collects angels. I don't know if you've seen some of my other videos uh, because she did want me to do a video of all her angels. So, you know, doing videos. Of course, I, I did it. And I was like, okay, no problem. You know, because in this world, it's always a give and take. So... Okay, now let's add a little bit of pink. Oh, look at that. Almost feels like it makes it come alive, huh? Right now I'm babysitting a cat and I can hear him in the bathroom. So I can't come in the bathroom because, you know, when you babysit, you know, you don't only babysit the grandchildren, you know. By the way, when they go on camping trips, you get the animals too. So I'm babysitting a little kitty. And uh, didn't want him on the table. He's not used to my house. He's, uh, you know, it's new to the family. You know, where it's just eating the moist food and everything. It has to be fed a certain time or whatever. So. Okay, welcome to Doris's Kitchen. <coughs> Today we have another birthday cake. How do you like that, huh? And today, uh, this one's for a hunter. And I asked him, okay, <coughs> what would you like for your cake? And he says, well, I want a log cabin in the woods with a water stream and, and a moose. So here we are. So what I done first, I uh, made a log cabin using Tootsie Rolls. Now, all we have right now in the stores, usually at Halloween time, you have the long Tootsie Rolls. But right now, all we have is the little ones. But, you know, once they warm up to your... Uh, 
body temperature and everything. You can kind of mold them into whatever. And then what I did was I used uh, some of my graham crackers and everything because the kids always like to make uh, s'mores and everything, so I always have plenty. And I used that for the roof. And what I did was I used a little bit of the chocolate frosting to help hold my uh, cracker on top of the Tootsie Rolls. And uh, I made my green frosting and everything. And you can make it all kinds of different colors. I also used some of my brown frosting that I used to help uh, seal the roof on the log cabin uh, to make kind of like rocks so it directs the, fl the water flow uh, in the different direction because you don't want it just straight. That's too plain. Okay. And then I used some of the little fishes. Kids always love these. They seem to make them all go the same way though. They're all going this way. So I used the little fishes and put a few. I cut one right in half so make it like he's jumping out of the water and everything. And then what I did was to kind of give the rock look uh, because if you're up on the mountain and everything and you have your log cabin, a lot of people will put their rocks and everything around so that they don't, you know, uh, drive off and stuff. Uh, of course, the cake's not big enough for that. And you can make your log cabin a lot smaller than this and everything because kind of made it. And then it was like, oh, a little bit too big for the cake. But, you know, this is all just play and, and it's the first time I've ever done it. I started out first with my casserole dish, and then my next two layers are actually pie plates upside down. So be creative, use what you have around the house and everything. So I always have a casserole dish and always have pie plates and everything for making pies. So that way I can make my layers. And then for here, to give it kind of like the little rock look and everything, of course I use my honey smacks. Those really look good because of the different browns. A little glaze of the sugar that's on it and everything. Uh, and of course it'll cut down on some of the frosting and you have something more nutritious and stuff. So I use that for my rocks here and also for my rocks on the top here. And then of course I use my chocolate jimmies and stuff to kind of make it like dirt on the inside and everything. And uh, then of course I made a whole bunch of these little trees because he wanted this in the woods. So we gotta put our trees on and stuff. Uh, and you can make them all kinds of color, you know, start with a light green and then just keep adding on and stuff. I'll show you how we make it. Okay, using my Pamper Chef here. What you do is you just start out with a bigger circle. Okay, I use my uh, star top from my pamper shaft and you just start big make your bottom and you just go around and then keep going around till you get smaller and smaller and then on the top just ding there you go and there's your little tree okay and then what you do is you let it uh, kind of like just dry up to the air okay then it'll be easier to pick because if you pick it right now it just come you know it's frosting it's soft and everything but if you let it just dry to the air and stuff uh, so you want to make this the day before uh, then it's a little bit harder more easier to manage okay so here we have some we got some darker ones and we got some lighter ones we kind of went all different colors and you just pick them from the bottom very carefully and then put them wherever you want them to be I'm going to go with different shades. I'm going to let them a little bit longer to the air. Uh, let me take from this one here. You know, and then just put it anywhere as you want. Get too much frosting on your knife. You can always just take it right off. So you just continue like this. Now if you have a junior hunter and uh, he's got a birthday coming up, this would be perfect cake to make for him and everything. 
kind of in celebration of his uh, hunting coming up. Because, you know, they're so excited the first year when they go. Of course, this is not a junior hunter. He wanted a moose in it uh, because that's one of the uh, things he hasn't done yet is to go moose hunting. I'm going to put one way up there. How's that? There you go. I have to decide where I'm going to put my moose. I'll put him right in front here. There you go. Whoops, got a little frosting on his buttons. There you go. He's on his way to get himself a drink. He's a really big moose, ain't he? <laughs> it's kind of cute. <laughs> I mean, you can just play with it and do whatever you want, you know? It's kind of nice. It's neat. And, uh, Juno hunters, I mean, dear God, that'd be special for them to turn around and, and to have a, uh, a cake like this for their birthday when they're about to start. Of course, if you have a, a uh, female junior hunter and stuff, uh, on each one of these you can use those, uh, uh, instead of the little jimmies, they have the, uh, uh, the ones that look like flour. And you can put that on the cake. Look at that. Just dress it right up. Now I'm going to put a nice dark one way up here. There you go. Isn't that pretty? Maybe a lighter one to go with it too. Okay, so use your imagination. And I'll call this one uh, Juna, Junior Hunter's Birthday Cake. Okay, because then you can always put the candles coming down. Okay, because they have to be 10 to be a junior hunter. So make it come down the stream to light up the way to the log cabin. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed my bringing this to you. And uh, remember that if you're a senior hunter or an adult, go ahead, take a junior hunter out. Teach them how to hunt and all the safeties of the woods. You know, sometimes when they turn 10, it's best to just take them and not give them the gun, you know, but to teach them all the safetiness uh, of the woods and everything so that we can continue to have hunters all the time. Okay, bye-bye now. Okay, I'd like to welcome you to Doris's Kitchen. And today we're going to make a football cake. Okay, just in time for the big game, you know. If some of you turn around and watch TV this weekend, the Houston, Texas is definitely a game to be watching. So this team has really come and made a complete turnaround. So we're getting ready for that. So that kind of gave me the idea. How about a football cake in time for the big game, you know, and Everybody is having all these parties to get ready and sit around and watch a game. And so we're going to do a football cake just in time for the big game. And hopefully uh, the men will appreciate all the effort that a woman will go into to make this cake possible. And for sure, if you put it in the centerpiece of your table when you have all the refreshments, because, you know, the men all got to have plenty to eat while everybody's over to watch the game on the big screen. So, uh, it'll be the talk. So, here we go. Now, a lot of us don't go out and buy a special dish for the football and all that stuff. What I used was, I happen to have, well, my daughter happened to have, an egg one for Easter that was given to her. So, we kind of used that, and then what we did was just kind of cut off here to make it... Uh, more egg shape, otherwise it'll look like an egg, and we're not having an egg party. <laughs> but that could be fun, you know. All right. So, another thing you can do instead of, you know, if you don't happen to have a pan like that, is you can always just use one of your square pans here. And what I done was, just took one of my printing papers. Uh, it won't be rounded but it'll still be shaped just like a football. So that might be the difference, but hey, you know, in this economy, you gotta use what you have and you don't wanna have to go buy a cake because it's gonna be square or whatever anyhow and just draw a football on it. 
So let's get a little bit more creative and stuff. The men deserve a little bit more attention. So we're going to give it to them and hopefully they appreciate it. Okay, so what we did was just take one of our printing papers, cut it, I mean fold it right in half, and then you disregard like one inch off the top. I'll show you how it looks after. Because we do want both sides to go even. Okay, so just take about an inch. Okay, and then just kind of just draw in what it might look like. Okay, half a football. Then what I did was I took harder paper because, you know, you're going to want to put it right on top there and then cut it off with a real sharp knife, uh, straight blade and everything. So I did it on a cardboard. Okay, now when you're done with the cardboard, after you've baked your cake, you can make it two layers if you want. It depends on how many guests you have. You can have it just one layer. And if you see, it fits right in. Okay, so this will give you an idea. Be just cutting off the, these two corners here, kind of just rounding them off. Okay, so use what you have around the house. You don't have to go out and buy anything special. Okay, so I got myself, of course, kind of like an egg-shaped tray. Now you can get these at the dollar store. And you'd really be surprised what you can get at the dollar store. So for a dollar, it's tin, uh, so you can uh, reuse it later on for something else. I mean, when it comes Easter, you want to do an Easter cake, or uh, just later on for any hors d'oeuvres or whatever, or even cupcakes and everything. These trays can be reused, throw them right in the dishwasher, wipe them right up. They've got a nice little design on them, and uh, you can reuse them. So... Check out the dollar stores because you can find a lot of plastic containers with lids. You can find all kinds of big spoons for serving spoons. I mean, for a dollar. Anything in the store is a dollar. Uh, so trays like this, I mean, they even have plates and glasses and everything. So the dollar store is a good spot to go. Okay, so we're going to start doing our cake now. Uh, when I made my chocolate frosting and stuff, of course I used my um, uh, Nestle's. Cocoa, uh, only because, you know, a lot of people will use just food coloring and stuff, but I have to be treated too. So when you use cocoa when you're making your frosting and everything, because I don't use door frosting, it just doesn't hold up. It'd be good for a flat cake if you're going to do just a flat one and everything. That'd be all right, you know, quick and easy and stuff. But if you want to add designs or anything like that, you need frosting that's going to stand up. So I use cocoa because I want to treat myself too, you know, while I'm doing this. Because the cocoa, when you add it in the frosting, makes it taste like a chocolate bar. And you know women all love chocolate bars. So, add the Nestle cocoa. I really love it. Recommend it. Okay, so I'm going to start. Now first to start off, of course I make mine a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to start by just putting some frosting on this, only because if I just start making the cake and put it on there, uh, it's kind of hard to get the underneath. So, I'm going to start off by doing this. So, to make my batch of frosting and stuff, what I did was I used three cups of shortening. And you don't have to use the big brand or anything like that. Use whatever. This one I happen to use store, store brand. You know, in this economy, we've got to watch every penny. So I use three cups of shortening. And then if you're going to buy your confectionery sugar in the boxes, it's going to take two boxes. Okay, because there's about four cups in each box. And it took two cake mix in order to do this. Um, so um, it gave me plenty left to make some cupcakes, as you can see. 
Okay, then just go back and forth like this. This is really cool. Okay, now I've already uh, used my green frost in here to decorate a little bit here because you kind of want a, a grassy look. So. Woo! There you go. All right. I'm going to wash my hands a little bit here. Okay, now before I put my top piece on and everything, uh, get these crumbs out of the way, I'm going to use strawberry jam in the middle of this football, only because you can only use so much frosting, you know, and then it just becomes too much, you know, so uh, just to make it different, I mean, if you prefer just using your, uh, uh, oh, the phone's ringing. If you prefer to just use frosting, you may, but I like being a little bit different. i to cut down on some of the calories, you know. So, and this adds a different treat. They add a little bit of jam in the middle, which is cool. I love it. Kind of got turned on on the games and everything from one of my friends, an old time friend, Arnold. He kind of turned me on to it because I never was one to watch football games, but I always felt, eh, get too upset if they cheat, you know? <laughs> like we all do. <laughs> Don't like cheaters. It just doesn't work. Okay. Now, yeah, let me see. I can make sure I follow the same pattern on the top. There we go. Wow. Okay, now don't slide. That's one of the problems. You gotta make sure your cake is right even so that it doesn't slide. Okay. Woo! How's that for a Big Mac? And you're going to want to go around and Okay, welcome to Doris's Kitchen. And today we're going to do our Easter Bunny cake. So first we made a white cake, and then we frosted him. And then we hurry up and put the coconut on while the frosting is still moist. Because if you let it harden, then your coconut is not going to stick to it. But first we have started with our, this is for the belly. It's like a half a football. If you watch some of my other videos, I use two of these to make a football for the big sports event. Okay, so we use that. And then we turn around and just use our muffin pan for our big muffin, which became his head. Then we use our little muffin pan, which uh, we use to make our own Reese's Buttercups. You have the little ones for the kids, or if you have little girls and they want to have a tea party, you can fancy it up to have fun, but we used a little one, and uh, we used a whole one for his tail. And then what we did was cut it in half and lay them sideways like that for the two front feet. Okay? So that's how we made him, and then we frosted him all up. So now, uh, I took some coconut and some green food coloring, shook it all up, so we're going to make his grass that he lays on. I'm going to put that all around him. Now if you don't have a tray, you cheat. I'm really a big one on using whatever you happen to have around the house. I'm really big on that. So uh, I'm not going to be using my uh, microwave oven during my Easter uh, dinner. So I took the tray from it. And that's what this is. This is the uh, tray from the microwave. So, see how you, you don't have to go out and buy anything special. I mean, you have muffin pans or whatever. And uh, 
just be a little creative on what you do. You know, if you don't have one of these egg-shaped things, you know, the best time to turn around and be collecting some of these is in the summertime if the, you go to yard sales and stuff. That's a good time to be collecting some of them. Here we go. So we put them in green grass. And the reason I'm putting the green grass is because the jelly beans I'm going to put are really going to show up in this nice deep green, uh, which is the grass which we don't have right now because we still have snow outside. There we go. A little bit more around here. A little bit closer in. Oh, my fingers are going to be all green. Ah! Well, you know, the best way to get the food color off your fingers and stuff is to use a little bit of common. There we go. Let me wash that up real fast here. That didn't stay on very long. <laughs> okay, now let's make him look a little bit more like a bunny now. So, we're going to give him his size. Cute little blue eyes. Give him his pink nose. Oh, come on. Stick him right in there. Kids are going to love this. Okay. Then we just used some uh, white construction paper. Made him some little bunny ears. Painted it. I mean, uh, used permanent marker there for the pink. You can use your crayons or whatever. Ah, this one doesn't want to cut right in here. Well, we got a trick for you. Kind of got himself stuck on a coconut and didn't want to go through. There you go. You know what? Maybe the other one needs to go a little bit deeper. There you go. Doesn't he look cute? Then we have a little bit of brown. We'll give him his mouth here. Okay, if the coconut get out of the way, you could see it. Okay, the magic of working with coconuts around the coconut. Ah, oh, he's so cute. Okay, now on his grass, we're just going to put these jelly beans. Now, what I like about this particular brand of jelly beans is that it's real fruit juice. And so for those of you who, okay, the kids are going to have enough candy, well, there you go. Alright, so a few little tricks here is to, if you don't have a tray, you can always use the tray that's in the microwave. So that's a little sneaky trick. Also, you know, if you have microwaves and you're going to throw them away because they burnt themselves out or whatever, because somebody put something metal in it, save the tray. Trays always work out good. Yeah. The kids are going to think that the Easter bunnies made out really good. All right, now don't forget I have another little trick for you. A lot of washing your hands when you do stuff like this. Okay, so here's our little bunny and everything. Now to make Easter a little special for the little ones, don't forget the little trick of when you hide and they wake up in the morning to go after all the eggs and the candy and chocolates all over the place, which I have all over the house, uh, put the little bunny tracks. Okay, so put your three fingers together. One, two, three, put them together. The other two behind the middle one. 
go in the water, then use baby powder and make your little footprints. Okay, not only does it make the house smell really nice, <laughs> but the kids think, oh my god, the Easter Bunny came! And they get all excited. And this works for quite a few years. So, there you go. So have a nice smelling house, and you all have a happy Easter. All right, welcome to Doris's Kitchen, and today we're doing our Valentine cake. Uh, and of course, you know, I'm always into using whatever you happen to have around the house. So I happen to have a round cake pan, so I did mine, just cut it. Uh, and when you do trace it, get a piece of cardboard or a paper bag or anything you have around that you can, you know, bend easy and stuff and just trace it, but trace it from the bottom. You don't want to trace it from the top because you'll be off. Okay, trace it from the bottom, cut it out, and then immediately take the two sides and hold it like this, and then just roll your hand over till you get a center. And then what you did is just cut, curve right here and right here. Now see, these are the only pieces that need to be cut because you want to have as much cake left as you possibly can. So you don't want to make your heart smaller than what the cake is. So these are the two bottoms right here. And then there's my V on the top. So all it is is like a V on the top. I mean, you can free hand cut it if you want. Just slice, take from your circle, just slice like that. And then a V, that's all you need to do on the top. But if you're afraid of messing up, Go ahead and go with that. And then you used a very skinny, skinny knife. You know, the $1 specials. Use that to cut it. It cuts easier, thinner, everything's okay. So I've already, and this is a double chocolate cake. Mm. Okay, and just to add color and stuff. Whoa, a little speck of cake there. A crumb. Must have been when I picked up the plate. There you go. Okay, a, uh, I did my top white because when you make a batch of frosting and you can get the recipe on how to do frosting from scratch and stuff on my uh, doll cake, Barbie doll cake and stuff and just cut that recipe in half because you don't need too much frosting. This is only a one layer and stuff. And um, I started out with just the white, then I added a little bit of pink color to make my sides pink, just to add more color, because when you're having a dinner and everything, the more colors you add to things, you know, it's always nicer, brighter. Okay, and then I wrote, I love you, so now all I have is the decorations on top here to do, and the bottom, which is what I'm going to do right now. Okay, just to give you an idea of what it's going to end up looking like. See, and that will help to cut the line between your white and your pink. Now it's always easy to turn around and just go to the store, pick up a cake, you know, or take your loved one out to eat in the town and stuff in a fancy restaurant. But that's not really what Valentine is all about. Valentine is really about giving of yourself. So don't be afraid to bake yourself a cake. Don't need to go buy a fancy pan, as I showed you already. You just need to put some time into it. Give of yourself. That's what Valentine is really all about. You don't have to be a professional like the big bakers or anything like that. That's not what people are looking for. It's 
See how beautiful that's turning out? And I'll put another layer at the bottom too. Okay, so I've also fixed a uh, stuffed shell uh, casserole to go because I'm having some people over. I have one in a glass pan and I have one in a metal uh, pan uh, because we're going to have a storm here. It's supposed to start this afternoon and it's going to run for a few days. So all of you who know, you know, how to deal with the bad weather, my guests will still have a meal because I can lay it on top of the... Uh, pallet stove, warm it right up even though we lose power. And then you're saying, well, if you lose power, a pallet stove runs with power. Well, that's what generators are all about. So we have that. So we'll have a generator to keep ourselves warm. We'll be eating by the firelight because of the uh, glass door that shows the flames. So no matter what happens, we're going to have our Valentine's dinner. Of course, I also fixed up some salads and everything this morning. Uh, only because, you know, and then just cover it with saran wrap. As soon as my uh, stuffed shells are cooled down enough, I'll cover that up too. Put that in the refrigerator. Uh, but I wanted to make sure my vegetables were all peeled and everything before the storm comes. Because we do, I mean, I live out in the country. We lose power a lot. So a lot of trees go down when you have a snowstorm. So it's always good to be prepared. So I know no matter what, I will be prepared to feed my guests. So this is how the first layer goes. You have some of those little heart... Uh, candy and stuff. After you put your bottom layer, you can turn around and put them around the bottom. And they'll soften because you know when you buy them they're hard, but because of the frosting and you keep it overnight because you know Valentine's tomorrow, they'll soften. So it won't, you won't have a problem with some of your guests being able to uh, uh, eat them, chew them or whatever. So don't be afraid. Give it yourself. Valentine is not about how much money you have. It's about giving of yourself. And you don't have to be a perfectionist because I definitely am not. I'm not a cake, you know, someone who sells cakes or any of that stuff. Special caterer or whatever. I'm just simple me. A mom, grandma, Great grandma, that's all I am. So I hope you enjoyed learning a few little tips and learning how to get a little bit prepared here for storms, especially with a special Valentine coming right up. Always got to be prepared. Better safe than sorry, you know that old saying. This is it. I still got some sewing and everything to do because my granddaughter, one of my granddaughters, helped me with making a special pillow for a great-grandson that's on the way. So when she got done, she said she wanted one. So you'll see that my next video, if I don't lose power by this afternoon, will be making her special pillow uh, because it's pink, because it's Dora the Explorer. 
because she requested to have one, so she has to have her own special pillow too. So when she comes over this afternoon, I will have her help me stuff it. Hopefully, I'm hoping that I can get it, the outside sewed before I turn it over and she sees what it is. And uh, so that you can all see the excitement and everything. She's quite the bubbly little girl. So I hope you've enjoyed my bringing this to you. Keep Valentine's nice and simple. Don't make it an expensive, stressful affair. Uh, and just do it for yourself. Bake it yourself. They appreciate it a lot more if they know that you've done it. All right, and there is my cake. Looks like a box of chocolate. Let's just pick it up and eat the chocolate inside, which is devil chocolate, which is super good. All right, I had another one ready. I thought I'd eat another one, but I didn't. There you go. All right, so happy Valentine to everybody. Hope your day is special. I hope your meal is special. I hope you thought ahead because we're having an awful lot of storms this winter, losing a lot of power all over the place. And if you do lose power, hey, invite the neighbor over too, you know? Because not everybody has a generator and stuff. This way, everybody gets to stay warm and have a nice meal. All right, bye-bye now. Okay, and welcome to Doris's Kitchen. And today we're making a dolphin birthday cake. A dolphin birthday cake, which is what, oh, a lot of boys and a lot of kids love dolphins, especially if you've taken them uh, on some trips and everything, or they've gone on class trips and everything. Uh, I'm making this for a friend uh, who wants something, uh, dolphins for her birthday. Anything dolphin is what she wants for her birthday. So I told her mom, I'll do the dolphin cake. So here's my dolphin cake. And, uh, and what we did was, uh, first of all, you know me, I use whatever I happen to have around the house. So I just have my round cake pan and stuff. And so I did that and then I made my two different uh, blues for my frosting and everything. And then my darker blue, got plenty left. Okay, but what I did was I went on the web and I looked at a dolphin and I said, well, okay, I'll draw it. Of course, you know, the paper wasn't quite big enough, so I'll have to allow for my extra there and for the extra on the tail and everything, which is what I did. And I tried to stay with the side. If you notice this one here come off, and I tried to stay with the side because then, you know, you're frosting, when you're frosting it with a, a knife and everything, it won't all stick and take the crumbs and you got crumbs of cake mixed in with your uh, frosting. So here's my little dolphin. I thought I did pretty good. Just add to more tail and more thin up there. So on the first layer, uh, because this is supposed to be the other side of the dolphin, uh, so you only leave one of uh, kind of like the legs, whatever you want to call it, the bottom fin. And for the top, of course, you have to go, um, for this side here, you have to go both layers. And when I did is the fin is I left the whole first layer I gave him his whole fin for the first layer. On the second one, I sliced it in half. So he only got half. And then, you know, you've got the roundness of the belly going on. Okay. And then as you can see, you know, it's got the light blue and then the dark blue, which is what we've done here. So what we have left to do now, and his tail, I kind of left him just on one layer, but then with frosting, you know, you can work miracle with frosting and just kind of made it go up and everything because his tail is not as fat as his body and stuff. So now we just need to bring him to life. So we need to give him his eyes. So that's the only part that I have left in which to do. So we're gonna go up like that. And then for around his eyes, we're kinda, kinda come out Kind of giving it almost like a diamond kind of shape. And then we're going to come back down. Just on the very side along with it. And 
There we go. And when it dries, you'll be able to just tap this down so it's not pointing out. And what we're going to do is get on this eye is we're just going to take a little chocolate kiss, put it upside down, put it right in the center there. There we go. And we'll give him a little more blue right there. If you got a bigger uh, Hersey kiss, you can use that. This did not quite fill it, and I want to fill. There we go. And there he is. There's our dolphin and everything. So you don't have to be an expert. You know, this is the first time I've ever made this one. Uh, if you check my uh, website and everything, you'll see all my cakes are first time making them. And I always use whatever I have around the house, except for the doll cake. That one there I have done before. So stay tuned for more because in the middle of next month, one of my granddaughters is having her third birthday. So... She always has a lot of people, so she is going to have something special. So I plan a very special cake for her, so if you want to see that. These are all just fun cakes that you can make for your kids. You know, you don't have to be a, uh, in the catering business and everything. Simple mom, grandma, great-grandma. You can do this, you know. Just take your time. Blend your colors in and everything. And if you find that there are too many bumps, you know, after you've uh, used your knife and everything, then you just lightly go and tap it down once it dries a little bit and stuff. So that takes, you know, a little bit. See? You get to knock that right down. Just like that. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed my bringing you this dolphin cake. So, happy birthday, April. This is for you. Bye-bye now. giving you a nice close view picture so you can see it you know with the fin and everything all of it very nicely so you can all see it and do these special things for your kids and everything it's the fact that you took the time uh, to make it and that's what makes it really special okay stay tuned for more bye bye